Hey YouTube fam, welcome back to my channel. Thanks so much for tuning in. As always, please remember to subscribe to my channel. Hit that notification bell below so you can get updates on new videos. So this video is a follow-up video on my PCOS video. I recently shared that I was diagnosed with PCOS about six years ago. Check out that video for all of the backstory and the information. If you suspect that you might have PCOS or something related, or if you suspect that someone else might have, or if you have no idea what PCOS is and you're curious, I'm really for us women knowing what is going on in our bodies, what's happening with our system, our hormones, all of that, especially before we get to a point where we might end up struggling to fall pregnant. I'll put the video somewhere at the top so you can watch the backstory if you haven't already to get the, the responses that I did both publicly and privately in my DMs. And a lot of you are still not completely comfortable talking about this in public and that's totally fine. I've gotten comments from women who have said that my video gave them hope um, that you know that they'll go check get checked out because they suspect that they have something similar or possibly PCOS itself. I am just so like happy and um, you know grateful that my story is inspiring you to have a you know a closer look at yourself and your health and you know um, try and get answers or if you already knew that you had PCOS um, not feeling alone in it because I felt very alone when I found out um, so I'm really really like yeah I'm really glad that my story is helping so many of you out there before I get into anything I just want to just put the disclaimer out again that I'm not a medical professional um, I'm not a doctor I have no background in healthcare nothing this is all part of my experience um, living with PCOS um, and the the things that my doctor has prescribed for me I am not a dietitian <laughs> I'm not a dietitian I'm not a nutritionist like none of that okay but it's all stuff that you know like I said I've read about uh, of my all my doctor has told me about um, and also just just through my kind of experiences so apologies in advance if one or two of the words aren't the scientifically correct terms um, if you can just you know go with me here <laughs> so I'm on a low GI lifestyle I don't like calling it a diet I think even the word diet makes you think that okay you know this is temporary I'm gonna do this just until my symptoms get back to normal or I'm okay and then you kind of go you know fall back in into that I believe in the power of words um, and so for me I always refer to it as a low GI lifestyle uh, low GI means low glycemic index foods that have a low glycemic index basically take much longer to break down um, your sugar levels don't spike glycemic index is basically like a, a like a range um, and a number I believe it's from zero to a hundred I have like a little table that I keep on my fridge actually I got from my doctor I know a lot of people say okay like I'm just gonna cut out carbs but some carbs are better than others and um, in a healthy diet and all of that you do still need some carbs I mean fruits have carbs like carbs are kind of almost everywhere even my doctor told me look it's gonna be kind of hard or impossible for you to completely avoid carbs but what you need to know is which ones are the good ones for your condition and which ones are not so good my diet before was very very high in carbs um, and so that was a huge reason why my insulin resistance was just out of it was like out of whack one of the uh, the symptoms that I didn't even know was related to PCOS and my 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 condition was that I crave sugar not just sugar like but like desserts puddings like cakes and I have that moresome thing in me that once I start it's really difficult for me to stop so I knew that if I stopped abruptly I would it would I would find it really hard um, to kind of you know actually completely transition to low GI so what I did was I weaned myself into it a simple way of doing this is how I swapped out um, refined sugars with more complex sugars rice um, I substituted white rice with brown rice and now I only eat wild rice white potatoes with sweet potatoes they have a low glycemic index pasta's pasta's huge in in my house because of kai it's easy it's quick he loves eating it um but we also make sure that it's durham wheat pasta 
I um, don't take sugar anymore in my tea, in my hot chocolate, in anything that I used to put sugar on. I've replaced that with honey. So to give you an idea of what I would eat on a typical day, I usually have like a bit of a winter and summer kind of um, uh, food plan in a way. So I'll start off with winter since we're in winter now. So I'll have jungle oats with some, you know, skimmed milk um with a bit of honey drizzle and i might sprinkle a little bit of cinnamon on it for example so that's my breakfast so kevin and i cook enough food for dinner to have that evening and then also for lunch the next day so it's typically you know grilled chicken um or grilled red meat lean as well i will take out the the skin fish is also great and then have like some veggies the fresher it is, the better, the more nutritious it is. So um, butternuts, carrots, um, spinach is great, grilled steak um, or chicken livers or basically my I'll have a protein, a heavy protein, and then I'll have uh, my veg. We usually either steam the vegetables or we would roast them in summer. So I have my nice bowl of yogurt and then I put in, it's just plain yogurt, unsweetened, so then I put uh, my muesli uh, or granola, whatever you call it, and then I drizzle that with some, um, a little bit of honey, as well as I cut up like an apple. So I'll have salads that, you know, have the lettuce and all of that, but I also have salads like with beans, um, sweet corn, I love sweet corn. Um, or I'll make a salad as my meal and I just make it massive. I'll, you know, put some avocado in there, put some boiled eggs or whatever. Or I will have like, you know, some egg uh, with, you know, a slice of toast, um, a little bit of butter or something like that. Keep it very simple. Most of the time for dinner, I might have a salad again because it's summer. But I would have, then I would have like the veggies, you know, I'd have spinach, I'd have beans, lightly sauteed um, veggies. Another key thing is in between your meals is to snack, to make sure your sugar levels don't drop. I found that skipping meals or not sticking to my, this timetable in general really does affect my, my energy, my sugar levels. I mean, I joke about it with people, but it's true. Like I become like a troll. <laughs> If I haven't had my breakfast, I'm just like, ah. it's either that or I'm re I'm just really low. Like I can hardly do much. People laugh at me, guys. I I've, I've rocked up at events, like the events in the morning, and I have a jar of my yogurt and muesli in in my jar because I'm like. I don't know what food I'm gonna get there. It's probably going to be stuff that isn't good for me. So take control of what you eat. A lot of the times this, it's the same kinds of foods that I know are not good for me. So there's biscuits, there's muffins, there's croissants, and they look good, they look good and everything, but they're not good for me. So I just make sure that I'm full um, before I get somewhere. So always just have, try and have, you know, these healthy snacks around. Lean biltong, yogurt is another good one. I have provita as well. I know pro snacking on provita, again, people have laughed at me, but I'm like, hey, it's doing the job. It's keeping my, you know, sugar levels in check. Fruits, you know, apples, um, and yeah, just a whole bunch of like fruits in general. Um, another great snack option is popcorn as well. So I make my own popcorn at home. It's not about like not eating carbs completely, but then you, you know, drizzle your popcorn with like all of this stuff. So it's about being careful about what you add, how much you add, just enough for you to taste something. If you can go without anything, even better. And then for drinks, I drink water, like a lot. <laughs> I drink water with all of my meals. Sodas, I have a Coke maybe once every three, four months if I'm really craving one. Weight wise, that's one huge thing. If you can cut out sodas, you can cut those out, they will help you so much. And I have juice maybe a little bit in the mornings and um, during winter I'll have tea. So I found that doing this consistently, um, I think it was over the space of a few months, I started noticing that my energy levels were much higher. Um, I used to get like, um, like almost like cloudy spots in my eyes and that was because of my insulin resistance because of the PCOS. And so, you know, I don't get those anymore. There was a time when um, I had Kai and I fell off, like when I was pregnant, I fell off my low GI lifestyle. 
I was just eating whatever my body was like, hey, that's what I want. That's what I eat. I was still eating relative as as relatively healthy as possible, but I wasn't sticking to low GI. But I really suffered for it because after I had Kai, I carried on eating this way and I could see that my vision was starting to get affected again. And so once I got back onto, you know, um, the pill, back onto, you know, the low GI diet, my doctor assessed everything and, you know, everything started calming down again. Once you get into it, you, you start like seeing the difference. And I think that's a huge sort of incentive to keep going. It's not easy at first, especially if you're not used to eating this way at all. Planning meals. Um, I find that a lot of the times if I don't have leftovers, for example, um, or if I'm out and about and I can't make it back home for lunch, the easiest things and the things that are more frequently available are the high GI um, foods. If I'm constantly on the go if i'm working i'm on set or if i'm whatever like it's it's really like a lot of that stuff is there so you just need to be careful about that if you have one of those jobs where you're always having to move around just prepare for it you know pack yourself a, a, a healthy snack pack yourself a lunch box if it's one of those things that's easier for you to prepare for your meals on the weekends and then set a time set aside half an hour an hour whatever it is to prepare your your food and your snacks for the week make sure you always have something on hand um, put stuff in the car um, if you're a commuter put something in your bag so you can just have that quick boost of energy it's just going back to the whole going cold turkey thing right i can't completely cut out cakes and puddings and ice cream and stuff i'll go crazy i tried it can't do it so what i've done is I have basically chosen what I call a cheat day, okay? So I've chosen my cheat day. It's one day a week where if I'm craving something, you know, like bad or taboo or whatever you want to call it, cakes, ice cream, custard, cake and custard. <laughs> that's like my favorite. Um, then I'll have it, you know, and then that's it. I will have that slice of cake or I will have that bowl of ice cream or whatever it is, I'll enjoy it, I'll savor it, I will mm, it's so good, and then that's it for the rest of the week. Most of the time you're eating with someone, right? So um, who, whoever that person is. So I asked Kev to just, you know, keep me accountable, keep me in line. If he sees that I'm going off track and it's Thursday and I'm still having cake and it's Saturday and I'm still having cake, then he just reminds me, babe, this isn't your cheat day, you know, because I know that I don't have that willpower on my own. So now I'm very particular, very picky and very discerning about what I'm going to eat on my cheat day because I'm like, this is it for the rest of the week. It better be good. It better be worth it. Another tip is if you are like me and, you know, someone's having a birthday at the office, they, I used to say, let me just, just go say happy birthday, but I'll come back and be like, hum, 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 hum. I'm eating I'm eating all the cake. It's not even cake cake. So <laughs> I'm like, what the hell? I don't, I don't feel awful about it afterwards. Like, why did I do that? And now I'm too full to eat my healthy lunch. What I do is when I'm called to be like, hey, we're gonna sing happy birthday and cut cake. I'll be like, thanks so much. I've just got some work to do. I'll be there just now. I would wait until everyone is, you know, done with the cake or whatever, whatever. Then later on in the day, just go say happy birthday. And so that way I avoid the temptation myself and I avoid looking rude as well, saying, ah, thanks, but no thanks, I don't want your cake. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found this video helpful. Please give it a thumbs up if you did. Let me know what you think. And I would love some more ideas on snacks for low GI eaters. That would be great. So if you have any more ideas, please leave them in the comments box below. And please also share this video with, um, you know, some women in your life just to get more awareness on these types of issues. I think the more we talk about them, the better it is for us. As always, please remember to follow me on social media, subscribe to my channel, and hit that notification bell below for my video updates. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.